and fantasy football extravaganza wrap-up show. We are wrapping up the end of the year. We had uh, the Super Bowl. I guess I can say that. They're not going to see me. I uh, had no. the Super Bowl Sunday night. It was probably the most exciting Super Bowl ever. I, they would want us to mention that. No, it was quite it was quite fine. So we're going to be talking about winners, losers, and uh, some things to look at in 2018. Uh, guess where I was this weekend? Nolans. It was amazing. If you've never been, I highly uh, recommend it. We got to see a couple parades. It was technically a business trip, but there was fun to be had. So and food to be eaten. Oh, oh, what oh, you've oh. Told me. <laughs> fried, fried oyster po' boys, Bloody Marys. Yes, what you've already posted. Uh... Yes, if you go on uh, Rick on the Rocks Instagram, or uh, are you shaking the camera? Are you always shake the camera. Uh, Rick on the Rocks Instagram. Uh, or Twitter, Rick underscore on the rocks at Twitter. Uh, you'll see some of the stuff that I uh, posted. And plus, I was there with my good friends from Kia, my hashtag Kia family, who dropped off a lovely new car for me today. Yeah, in fact, said Po' Boy was, uh, you put a picture up. A little video. It's actually one of yeah. my favorite sandwiches of all time at the restaurant Mother's. Mother's, yes. Yeah. Which they're that. actually they're known for a beef po' boy, which is quite tasty. But there's nothing like fresh Louisiana oysters. I mean, these oysters probably came out yeah. of the water like that morning. So, all right, where to start, where to start, where to start? What are you thinking? Well, I, I just really quickly, since it was so unique, uh, Eagles beat the Patriots 41-33. First time Bowl. ever. E A G L E S. Eleven hundred and eleven hundred and fifty-one total yards. Yes. Uh, New England had six thirteen. Philly five thirty-eight. Tom Brady, who everybody I know hates. I'm repping Philly right now with my Wawa cup. Yeah, Brady had passed for five hundred and five yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions because he had the late turnover. Uh, Just if New England had had any defense whatsoever, they they might well have won the game. But yeah. anyway, it was a unique game. The statistics were phenomenal. Uh, Foles, the so-called backup, not passport, a lot of penalties, which actually three seventy-three. No, it made the, for the a, game played out real nice yeah. with not a lot of penalties. I actually enjoyed that. For those of us that don't care a whole lot about the uh, the commercials and stuff, although. There was a couple, and we'll talk about them later. He doesn't want to see the Rocks trailer for his new five movies coming yeah. out this year. Anyway, now one other little treat since we talk all I talk all the time about all my fantasy football teams. Um, this is the actual final page. You can't see it, but I'm just I I have it here from the Chi Town, which is uh, often what we call Chicago. I'm originally from the suburbs. Chi-town? Chi-town. Yeah, that's what... That's T town a very common uh, abbreviation or whatever you want to call it. Is that one of the ones you won? This is the one I won. What's up, Shaka? The overall championship. The interesting thing is, and I've been talking about how difficult this is through the years. The semifinal game, I finished nine and four in this league, which meant I was tied for third place. So I played a, a team that, that was 10 and three in the first two weeks. I won that by 0.9 points, nine tenths of a point, 247.2 to 246.3. That incredible, that's, that's how close this stuff can be. And then in the final two weeks, I- That's why we take blood pressure meds. I defeated the top seed who was 11 and two in the league, very good record. I beat him 260 to 240. Oh, and nice. just as a special treat, here's what you get when you win. You, you'll never be able to see it. But trust me, right over here is a cup. Yeah. It's they, a major award. <laughs> yes, a major award. It says congratulations, 2017 league champion, Chi-Town Choppers. Uh, Choppers is a salute to the Seminole, Seminole Chop. 
uh, owner Dick Foucault. And that, that's what you receive playing in these free leagues. You, you get this. And that's what you're playing for. I played in five leagues. Uh, Rick and my team finished uh, as consolation champions, I believe. Would that be correct? Can you call it a champion? Sure. Consolation? Uh, why not? I'm calling it. Okay. Yes, we were consolation champions. No, 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 no. Consolation, not constellation. Oh, those two. Constellations are up there somewhere. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So what do we have? We got winners and losers. Some of these I took a little, not a fence, but, you know, our... All the people we have working for us here at the show. Yeah, plus uh, they, a special thanks goes out to NFL.com and ESPN.com. And Shaka, my friend Shaka, who's joined us right now. Yeah. Yes, Shaka, first loser. That's absolutely <laughs> the yeah. consolation champion. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't the worst loser. You were the yeah. first loser. Now I took offense to some of these what they called losers, and especially like the one that we're going to go through, the top loser that they said. Well, I've got... I'm calling BS on. All right, you call BS. Let's go through some winners first. I have uh, a list that is essentially the fantasy best at uh, five positions. Uh, the number one quarterback in fantasy football this year across all various... Uh, ESPN, Yahoo, everybody else, was Russell Wilson for Seattle. Never would have thought it. Um, he had an amazing 97.4% of Seattle's touchdowns that he either threw for or ran in himself. He accounted for 37 of 38 of their touchdowns. Does that mean they're screwed without him? Yes. <laughs> yes. But if you had him, if you go back to my fantasy team here that I won with, quarterback Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. You know. The other two in, in order were Cam Newton, believe it or not, and I'm not a big Cam Newton fantasy guy, and then Tom Brady. I am a big Tom Brady fantasy guy. The top running back, Todd Gurley, LA Rams. Great team to watch play this year. Uh, and I think they're just going to get better. He had yes. 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns. Um, he was the top running back with, in fantasy I points. I actually had him. I had a little notation. You keep talking. You keep talking. Followed by Le'Veon Bell for Pittsburgh and then Alvin Kamara, the rookie for the Saints, who just was phenomenal. I was, Alvin Kamara had a hell of a I season. was very fortunate to pick him up in a number of leagues after three or four weeks, I guess it was, that I finally finally snagged him, and uh, he helped me a lot. The wide receiver was Antonio Brown for the Steelers, 1,533 yards, nine touchdowns, followed closely by DeAndre Hopkins, who had less yardage than Antonio, but – had 13 touchdowns. Uh, the one little stat that I wanted to point out about Gurley the second. It's not, it doesn't sound cool when you say it like that. Todd Gurley the second. Sorry. He was on the greatest number of ESPN fantasy championship rosters over any other player that you could have picked up this season. And it was almost double. Was it almost double? Yep. It was, he was almost at, on 35% of the championship teams. 47%. Oh. Our interns gave me the wrong number. Yeah. Maybe two different sources. It but, might be two, but yeah. But it was a incredible. Lot. Incredible for the guy playing for the Rams. Like, seriously. Well, that's what happens. They had a breakout. So we have Keenan Allen at two and Larry Fitzgerald at three up for wide receivers. Uh, Antonio Brown and DeAndre Hopkins were, were 1A, 1B. Tight end was Travis Kelsey. For Kansas City, had another terrific year with 83 catches, 1,000 yards, followed by Gronk and uh, Ertz for Philadelphia, played in the Super Bowl. The number one kicker was Greg Zerline for the L.A. Rams, who had 170 fantasy points, which is more than Devontae Freeman, DeMarco Murray, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, A.J. Green, Mike Evans, 
uh, Gronkowski, Kelsey. So kickers are valuable. Get a good one and oh, hold yeah. one. Rick and I held on to uh, the kicker for uh, Hushka for Seattle for a number of years. Yeah. It's an uh, easy, if nothing else, you find a good kicker, it's an easy 12 points every week. Yeah. Easy. Uh, when they traded him, why well, we backed off of him. But anyway, so yeah, so the most owned in fantasy uh, on championship teams were Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley, number one. Le'Veon Bell, number two. Kareem Hunt, running back from Kansas City, three. Julio Jones, Atlanta, number four. Melvin Gordon, five. How many people do you think held on to Julio? Just grabbed him and just held. The thing about Julio was he had he had fairly decent numbers, but he only had three touchdowns for the year. Three. Yeah, yeah. It's insane. I don't know. I, I like Atlanta. I've used Atlanta a lot. You're absolutely right. This China. year I had to get away from them because they, their offensive coordinator did a terrible job this year. They switched offensive coordinators. And... Um, they did just a horrible job. I didn't think they used Devontae Freeman worth a darn. I didn't think that they used Julio worth a darn. Um, it just, to me, it was a mess. Um, and they need to get that straightened out because they got the offense and their defense isn't that bad. So, right. So, anyway, so what did I say? LaShawn McCoy, yep. Mike Evans, then Kamara. Kamara had 14 touchdowns. It was crazy. Um, Poor Mike Evans on a horrible Buccaneers yeah. team this year. Oh, that was another weird little stat that I picked up. I don't know that we you could say we particularly made fun of the 49ers for – unfortunately, the Browns, it's too easy. Uh, and I have a lot of good friends that are Browns fans, so I wouldn't want to upset them. The 49ers, what an interesting season. And I know you're going to be like, who, the what? They won five straight. They ended their season off with a five-game win streak. They ended up at six and ten. And of course, just going through the stats that our uh, our interns dropped off to us, I was like, "Well, that's really not so bad. That's not as bad as I, for whatever reason, I had in my brain that you know two and whatever." They finished better than almost ten other teams in the NFL. Yeah. With that five game win streak at the end of the season. Yep. I started looking at the Jets, the Browns, of course, Indianapolis, Houston, Denver, the Giants, the Bears, the Bucks. I mean, it's just that's a, a hell of a list. And here's the 49ers that everybody, like I said, it was just too easy with Cleveland this year. The people were bashing the 49ers. But they ended up at six and ten, and and really, I I, I kind of was like that that five game win streak. That's pretty impressive. They they started what for whatever whatever reason gel. Yeah, the funny thing about that was at the start of the season, um, twenty to one. The odds of winning the Super Bowl next year for San Francisco, they have them at twenty to one. Hmm. Well, that's not bad. That, the, you, the interesting, the funny thing is how people that are going to bet on the Rams at the start of the 2017 season, if uh, you were ranking the teams in California, right? Okay, you would have started with Oakland on top. Yes, and they which were we horrible. did. They were awful. I do, I do. We did. We 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 both were like. And you're like, grab anybody from, grab them. They're going to be. Amari Cooper may have yep. been, and we'll talk about Amari Cooper in a minute. He may have been one of the biggest busts there was, but nobody on that team did much of anything. It was just horrible. So I don't know what they're going to do. But the Chargers were the Chargers. They, they play pretty level, and sometimes they're good, and sometimes they're, you know, with Phillip Rivers, that's what they'll you get. They'll get to a wild card. They might get to a playoff, and that's it. Yeah. That's as far as they'll ever get. It kind of puts along. And, uh, but then the Rams had a, a breakout season. Nobody saw it coming. The 49ers, huh. after they did some tweaking around, all of a sudden, here they come. And now who knows? Now it's uh, Oakland, soon to be Las Vegas Raiders. Um, 
If just, it's a just mess. if they had made just a couple of moves earlier, the 49ers might have been tied for second place with the Seattle Seahawks. Oh yeah. Yeah, Seattle, every time you Which turned around, right. somebody was getting hurt. So they Yeah, uh, they had a lot of bad injuries. First half of the season, Russell Wilson wasn't himself. He was hurt. But second half of the season, he was phenomenal. So we went through – did we go through all of the – So, oh, let me – one thing about Alvin Kamara that's interesting. In the offseason, the Saints picked up uh, Peterson. Right. They're eight, the ace running back from Minnesota that – grumbled and complained and oh i'm fit and everything they tried him out for a couple games he had one decent game one yeah and what five games into the season or whatever they shipped him yeah and after that kamara had 14 touchdowns and him and him and uh, ingram together mark ingram were phenomenal yes and uh with Drew Brees just throwing mean... the ball michael thomas catching the ball um he just didn't fit. He doesn't fit anywhere. Uh, well, that's because of his crappy attitude, I think. I mean, he just turns people off, man. Yeah. You know? And he doesn't block much. Yeah, um, of course he's not going to block. Yeah. <laughs> he's not looking out for anybody but himself. No, and I'm not gonna, he's yeah. an injury waiting to happen. True. So, True. So, anyway, the rest of the top players in fantasy were uh, Gronk. Number nine and number yes. 10 was Tyree Kill, the wide receiver for Kansas City. Kansas City, by the way, was, uh, of course, they've already shipped their quarterback, which is really surprising. But, well, not surprising. A, for some, whatever reason, they, they think they can do better somewhere else. Uh, they have they drafted Patrick Mahone last, this past season, and supposedly they're going to put him as their number one quarterback. So, It'll be interesting. But they have Hunt at running back, and they've got Tyreek Hill. And Shock has got, got a quick question. How do you guys feel about the coaching changes so far? I'm not sure how I feel about Detroit getting Patricia. I think that's a big mistake. What do you think about that, Shock? <laughs> um, he didn't really like flower you know, like put like nice candy coating on that or send that with flowers. Was just what like, happens wow. a lot with assistants – is they get into a certain system, for instance, in Belichick's system. Um, if you look at Belichick's assistants who have gone out I figured you would. <laughs> into the real into the real world, and they're the last time I saw, and it, this was in the last week or two, they're pretty much five hundred coaches, you know, yeah. win, wins and losses. Uh, they're they're nothing special. There's a few Belichick disciples that have succeeded, but there's just as many that have uh, fallen flat on their face. And um, Josh McDaniels, who was all signed, sealed, and delivered to uh, to take over the head coaching job in Indianapolis, uh, suddenly decided, what, last night, this yeah. morning, or whatever, that he ain't going. Mm -hmm. Uh, apparently, from what I read, uh, Belichick and Robert Kraft sat him down and said, we'll get you more involved in the overall operation of the team, uh, how we run things, da 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 Apparently, Josh McDaniel has four young kids in school. Uh, he's not working for free. Can't slide a guy for making a family and, decision. And um, I think this pretty much assures that, that Brady will be back, which Brady's been saying all along. So, What do you think about Chucky at, at uh, the Raiders? I think it's going to be a colossal. I think they, they hired Gruden because of their move right. to Las Vegas. I think they wanted – a highlight coach, if you will, a name coach to deflect the fact that their team seems to be going down the tubes. Shaka says they're losing their def defensive coordinator by bringing him in. And Austin has had our, our defense playing great for the past few years. You're right. You're right. Yep. So um, that was the one piece not to take out. And they decided to, you know, that's Jenga, man. Yeah. Well, and this is the thing when I saw Gruden's deal. And living where we do in South Florida, we're kind of like upper South Florida, 
um, in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, yeah, Gruden lives not far from here. Right. You know, Gruden seems like he's a pretty cool guy. I like yeah. some of the stuff he's done with the ESPN. If you ask any hardcore Bucks fan what they think about Gruden, you're get, it's a 50-50 shot. It's a love or hate. Yeah. And the people that hate him will tell you, well, yes, he did get us the Super Bowl, but he won with someone else's team. And they will lay it right out. They don't think that he had anything to do with it. They feel like he stepped in and just did what Dungy had already set into motion and let it happen. Yeah, our friend Shaka here says image is the reason they got they got food. Absolutely. He looks Which, good. He's, he's sharp. He's great on camera. He's got some fire in him. Yeah, he's, he's going to be the face of the franchise. But I think I, I think he's the wrong coach for that team. Of course, he's got a history with him. I get what they were – what the, you know, they've got the fanfare and everything. And, the, you know, I understand what they're doing. It was a really good, I think, more of a PR move uh, for them. Because, like I said, you throw that guy on camera, he's money. You know, he can lose the game and – by the end of the interview, you're like, it's okay. Next week we're going to get him. Yeah, he's I don't very blame good him for, at that. I don't blame him for taking that kind of God, cash. No, no, not to. no, 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 no. More, mean, why wouldn't he? His kids. More power to him. His son is playing football at uh, one of the high schools here. Yeah. Uh, the quarterback, believe it or not. And, is his, is uh, his brother still employed? Oh, yeah. Jay Gruden. Is, he's still with the Redskins. still the coach of the Redskins. Coach. Yeah. Uh, at least as of today, I presume they're going to keep him. One of the top AFL quarterbacks of yeah. all time. And now they have uh, Alex Smith, who they think is going to be their savior. All right. Um, and I'm a big Alex Smith fan. So, so I'm going to move to losers real quick because I this, this stuck a craw in my butt. Okay. Uh, Hit me. Earlier today. These are some fantasy losers. Is that what we're covering? Yes. And the top one, so they're saying, here, I've got it starred asterisk. And it, I don't know if you can actually make out. It says BS. Robert says Jay Gruden is trash. <laughs> <laughs> that may be, but he threw for a lot of yards in the AFL. Top loser, they say, is wide receiver Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson. Now, we try to keep the show PG, but I'm going to say it. I'm calling bullshit on that. I don't think that he is the top loser. I think it, he was a victim of circumstance. He's still 33 years old. He's in his prime. He looks great. I think it had to do with a lot of different factors. Yeah, he's gotten hurt a bit, but then Aaron Rodgers, you know, that they're, they're, if Aaron Rodgers hadn't gone out, Jordy Nelson would have had another banner year. I don't think that that's his fault. I don't think he should be included in the loser bracket. Again, he was a victim of bad circumstances. Well, remember, though, Rick, this is in regards to his fantasy standing. Yes, I know. And many of us, myself included, yeah, love Jordan. We've Nelson. had him on our team for years. I've been years. using him for years. I use him in the in the weekend fantasy uh, games. Yep. Uh, although once Aaron Rodgers got hurt, why well, I stopped. Um, you know, yeah, that's just that's just part of, of – We had Rodgers as our quarterback – what, two, three years in a row? Yeah. Um, oh, because the two of them are just, I mean, they're a great combination. Chaka, why don't you say what you really feel about Jay Gruden? I know, I Good think that's just heavens. there. He's fresh. Our friend Chaka is not <laughs> a Jay Gruden fan. I, I don't get it either. I think he may be a good assistant somewhere, but oh, sure. for them to keep going along with. Uh, you have to get the ball in order to be productive as a white. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So All yeah, right. I think that's I think uh, Washington's on its way down to be quite honest, even with or without Alex Smith. And I don't once again, Alex Smith just got tired of of being tagged with that franchise tag for well potentially three years in a row. Um, so I don't blame him as con for taking a big deal once again. Um, these guys got to make their money while they can. And believe me, these NFL teams have a ton of it. These, yeah. these TV contracts and they're being renegotiated. Um, so Fox just picked up the Thursday night one, um, and didn't come cheaply. So 
The other losers season. were. Who were the other losers, Rick? You got some other losers? How about Terrell Pryor? That was the only one that really. Since, since we're on on the subject of Washington Redskins, Terrell Pryor. <laughs> um, who people were ballyhooing him before the season started. Yeah. That's going to be a breakout year. And I'm thinking, yeah. speaking of BS, <laughs> I didn't buy it. I'm still not buying it. Um, he was a mediocre quarterback in college um, as far as having the skills for the pros. That's why they switched him to wide receiver because he is athletic. But yeah. um, I think it would be akin to taking the Flowers kid who was a quarterback here at uh, the University of South Florida and um, trying to make him into a, a wide receiver, which I suspect they may try to do this year um, yeah. in the NFL if somebody picks him up and takes a chance on him. Um, some other fantasy losers, Matt Ryan, I've already mentioned him. And remember, this is in regards to their worth uh, as far as uh, fantasy rosters are concerned. He went from one of the best last year to one of the worst this year. Another one I've mentioned, of course, is Amari Cooper, mm -hmm. um, the wide receiver for uh, Oakland. And finally, uh, this one's interesting, the number five loser uh, it's going to be Jay Ajay. Now you're saying, yes, but Jay Ajay won a Super Bowl. Well, remember, he spent half the season with the Dolphins, and they really couldn't, they actually got better after he left. Uh, then he went to the Eagles, and he was going to be the answer to their running game. He was going to yeah. su supplant uh, Blunt uh, as their number one running back. He, I think, once again, like Peterson at, at in New Orleans, um, I think Ajay had one decent game. It may even have been on television, uh, yeah. like a Thursday night game or something. But other than that, he was just the same, not very good uh, player that he was. Uh, and you notice who got all, most of the carries in, in the Super Bowl. You take a guy like Blunt that's played for, for the Patriots and been successful with them. And they went right to him. They didn't even fool around with Ajay. Ajay was in the game. He ran a few plays. So, Speaking of QB to receiver, is Denard Robinson still in the league? <laughs> uh, maybe not. I don't know. I don't think yeah. so. <laughs> no, and that's, I'd have to have the interns look that one up, Shaka. Yeah. Well, you don't know. I mean. No. You're gonna have uh, you're gonna have a draft coming up, and uh, who knows what's gonna happen? I mean, no, I had, I had a, uh, a kid that I know from uh, from our area that I'm very good friends with his his mother and his family, and uh, was supposed to be playing Green no Minnesota. Last I'd heard, he was going to Minnesota as, as a as a receiver. And he's the kid uh, a few years ago, if you remember right, in the Louisville bowl game a few years ago had the play of the week uh the catch he had but it ended up being like one of the plays of the year uh damian copeland and i thought i thought he was going to be playing football before i know it he's got like a modeling contract he's, he's done with football and he's modeling now all over the world so yeah i mean you just don't know these guys come in and out and it's like okay well if i don't have to take another hit or get my my brain smashed some more you know i get i get it you know yeah. All right. So, oh, and I've got to, I've got to wind this up after a few minutes. I didn't realize that. I've got things to do. Well, I have a surprise for you. Uh oh. So we can't wind it up yet. You're just gonna have to sit tight. Okay. I have. Before we wrap this up, I have a story time. Oh, story time of that. All right. The last story time of the season. Well, I don't know. Maybe. The story, oh, time, the story time is this, okay? Once upon a time in 2018, there were a lot of good movies coming out for the rest of the year. Yes. The end. Now, <laughs> I have in front of me my very own compiled list of some of these movies. Now, can I, can I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to segue. I'm going to back up real quick. Dad and I, since football season is over, are both huge movies buff, movie buffs. So we're hoping, and not only like movies that are going to be coming out this summer, there's also a large list of really fantastic, and I don't know why this number is, is, is 
so pertinent. A lot of really classic, really great films, 30th anniversary in 2018. Mm -hmm. So we will be doing a mix and mash of new movies in the theater and 30th anniversary movies. Movies like Beetlejuice, one of my favorites. Willow, one of the most underrated sci-fi fantasy films of all time. So that's what we're going to be doing instead of until football comes back around in July, August. So here we go with some of the movies. Let's just run this down. we got coming up February 16th, which is, what, uh, nine days? Some of these. I might, the, I might disagree some of these. This isn't a disagreement. This is just some movies. We oh, may okay. or may not like them. Okay? All right. Okay. How about that? I just wrote some down. Okay. Uh, coming out uh, February 16th, the next Marvel movie, which is Black Panther. Hell yes. Uh, with Chadwick Boseman, which is uh, being... Heavily promo. They're saying it might make $200 million. It's a big yeah. weekend. Uh, March 2nd is Red Sparrow. Mm. You're saying, what's Red Sparrow? Well, it's Jennifer Lawrence playing a double agent. I don't know how that's going to play. Who knows? I liked it better when it was called Atomic Blonde. Yeah. So Atomic Blonde uh, with Charlize <laughs> Theron. With the, go out and buy that DVD. Coming up March 16th is the new Tomb Raider. Uh, if, for those of you who may or may not remember the old Laura Croft Tomb Raider movies, uh, start Angelina Jolie. They are a video game. Is that what you call it? Yes, it is. It's a long, which, which, a long-standing video game, very popular. Well, they have rebooted. Yes. Tomb Raider, and they're rebooting the franchise with Alicia Vikander. And I just saw a uh, video about five-minute video of her workouts for this it's insane what kind of shape this woman's gotten into we don't know what work out. our favorite movie of the year coming up april 20th is super troopers 2 you're damn right it is so mark the date meow for twizzle yeah. <laughs> for twizzle super oh. troopers 2 and if you haven't gone on the website and seen the extended Casey Dillon join us. Reverend Casey Dillon. Um, Super Troopers, there's an extended uh, Red Band trailer on the website that is absolutely just make you fall on the floor laughing like hysterical. Yeah. All right, next Mar one. In, Mar in May, Avengers Affinity Wars on the 4th. Just, uh, there's a great trailer just out today or yep. yesterday for Deadpool 2 with yes. Ryan Reynolds. Absolutely. Coming up the 18th. Yep. And then the next Star Wars movie called Solo, which also debuted a trailer. Yes, they will, Casey, because it's free. Uh, coming up the 25th. <laughs> We're not sure about that. Solo, yet. no, not after the last Star Wars. June 8th is Ocean's 8, mm. which is uh, the prequel to all the Ocean's 11, 12, No, and no, it's not a prequel. Well, it it is. It's a tag-on. It, okay, a tag-on. With Sandra Bullock and a cast of thousand women breaking into stuff. Um, <laughs> thousands, a cast of thousands yeah. breaking into things. July 6th, Ant Man and Wasp. Yep. Which another Marvel, yep. it should be great. July 27th, Rick's favorite would be Mission Impossible 27. Not a 48. chance in hell you're getting me to go see that movie. Uh, with Tom Cruise called nope. Fallout. Nope. This one Rick will go to, Equalizer 2. Absolutely. August 3rd with Denzel Washington. Loving it. The new X-Men, November 2nd. Yes. Dark Phoenix, which we hope yep. is back to the old ways of X-Men. Then December. Well, I like their choice of the director. I think it's going to be good. December, we have Spider-Man on the 14th. Wait, which Spider-Man? Oh, that's the Spider-Man. That's the cartoon. Oh, is that a cartoon? That's a new, yeah, that's a new oh. Universe that they're opening, opening. They're using uh, Miles Morales, who is a favorite, is a 14-year-old African American um, Spider-Man. So they're opening up what they call the Spider-Verse, which oh. is, if you haven't seen the trailer, it looks fantastic. All right. Yeah. Uh, the 20th of December, Star Wars Episode Nine. I guess they don't have the title. Who knows? Still not, still not sold. And then the 25th, Christmas Day, is Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes. The Queen story. Yes. Queen the band. My, one of my favorites all the time. And also, the same day, I threw this in, Mary Poppins Returns. What's Christmas without a return of Mary Poppins? Not returning to my house. Uh, <laughs> I thought you'd like Mary Poppins. 
My daughter might go swing them once. Everybody loves Mary Poppins. my wife in the ghost. It's on Christmas movie. not to like Mary Poppins. Yeah, I'll be drunk. So, anyway. <laughs> I'll be eating turkey sandwiches. So anyway. Casey said it was good to see you. Oh, good to see you too. Remember Casey, he's a good buddy of mine from high school, back in the Tulsa days. Yes, I remember. Living out in Boulder. I was in Tulsa. Boulder, that's right, you were there with me. <laughs> yes, I out was. there in Boulder, Colorado. Constantly coming over to Victory Christian kids. High School to get you out of trouble, by the way. Yes, bye. you were. <laughs> Constant in school suspension. Yes. Oh, well. All right, so what it's do you think? All good. I think we're good. So what I'm going to be doing with the, uh, the new show, first of all, we're going to have to come up with a catchy name. Yeah, uh, but I'll be sending out follow Rick on the rocks on Facebook and uh, I'll be sending out like a hey keep in mind keep a date in mind time in mind we're gonna come up with all that uh, so that we can keep coming. Yeah, Rick on the rocks and mommy musing will be spending an entire week in Boom. cruising around California cruising around California what's up man um, next no next week coming up soon yeah later, we're later doing this month and Something so like that. it'll be after that i would think and uh, yes no but we'll come up with a, a snappy like i said a snappy top yeah, and fly the, eagles my my buddy ben that just joined us fly eagles, big fly. eagles fan oh. big eagles fan yes shaka i've always been a troublemaker you oh, know that you, you got no much, idea shaka how much trouble did we get into in college shaka come on yeah man. well that didn't come out of nowhere Guess where he got all warmed up in practice? Yeah, but Shock is a preacher's kid too, so he knows where I'm coming from. Oh yeah. What's yeah. up, Ben? Ben, it's the end of the show, but that's okay. Like we, like I was saying, we've got a new show coming up. Uh, it's going to be all about movies. Yeah. So um, Ben does a lot of podcasts and all kinds of stuff. Ben's a hugely, insanely talented. Well, we found out, or Rick found out guy. at Dad 2.0 last weekend that a lot of people apparently watch our stuff. And people have watched the show. I couldn't believe it. Quite a few people mentioned how much they like the show. Yeah. So I was as happy as a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, it's, no, it's, it's very oh, really it's very flattering because you never uh, <laughs> you, you never know you never know if anybody we knew Shaka was watching yeah because Shaka has more or less become like a co-host over the last yeah over the last few months um, in so, 2018 and, Shaka is going to be a regular participant yes Ben think. we have to do karaoke Ben's a karaoke freak oh, super yeah? freak yeah he's great at karaoke uh, we sang karaoke in San Diego when when one summer yeah um but yeah just keep an eye on rick on the rocks and i'll be letting you know when the new show with rick on the rocks and dad will be starting so everyone have a wonderful week have a blessed and safe weekend thank you so much shaka ben casey everyone else out there in facebook land take care and have a great day see ya Bye.